established a reputation as one of Britain's most distinguished broadcasters. But in 2013, Paul Gambaccini's world came crashing down when he was falsely accused of historic sex offences. And now in a new documentary, Paul is going to be appearing alongside Sir Cliff Richard and Neil Fox to recount the torturous year that he faced under that high-profile investigation. I mean, this is going to be such an incredible watch. Paul's joining us now alongside his husband, Christopher. Guys, so lovely to see you this morning. Paul, we know each other very well from Saturdays on the, right, on the wireless. Um, Paul, uh, just reading through this, I mean, I, knew, I know what you've been through, but when it's, you read it all back, I mean, it's horrendous what you were both put through. Let's go back to October 2013. Let's go back to that morning. What happened? It was uh, darkness. I thought it was 4.38. They say 5.30, who knows? Uh, and uh, I heard the doorbell ringing. I thought, is this a dream? Mm. And then I heard the doorbell ringing again, and I thought, this is not a dream. So I got up, opened the door, uh, I looked through the peephole, and uh, <laughs> there they were. And, How many? Uh, How many were there? I counted eight. Okay. Uh, which means I underachieved compared to Lord Bramall, who had 20. But nonetheless, eight is enough. Mm. And uh, the man uh, who was at the front uh, announced what I was accused of. Which was? What were his words, Paul? <sighs> well, uh, I, I can't repeat them on okay. television. Right. I, I've been told that they're unpleasant. Okay. 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 Uh, and so, then Chris comes out. Thinking that we'd been, we were being burgled, because yeah. I'd yeah. heard the voices and the multiple footsteps, and it was 5 a.m. in the morning, and I'd just been woken up from this. And uh, so I stormed out, and then that was when I heard the words, we're arresting you on suspicion of uh, a X, list y, of yeah. offences. Now, I had thought this might happen, because I was U tree 15, and they numbered us. And uh, actually, I thought it might happen, because I had gone on GMB with Lorraine. And uh, it was the week they, uh, they were having their television preview, and it was the week there was the expose of Savile. Yeah. And she showed a clip, and she said, uh, well, what do you think of that? And I said, I've been waiting for this to come out for 30 years. Mm. Well, little did I realize that there was someone at home who thought, how dare he say that about Jimmy Savile, and he decided to have a go at me. And that was the beginning of the whole thing. And uh, I, I know. And, and just to think that in this country, you could be arrested with no evidence. Mm. Now, Cliff was told when he said to the uh, South Yorkshire police, you have no evidence. And they said, the accusation is the evidence. And this was the legacy of Keir Starmer, who was the director of public prosecutions at uh, the time that this witch hunt started. And he had a new philosophy, which was believe the accuser. Mm. Inverting, but, you were, but you're still named, even though you haven't been charged. Uh, that's right. Uh, so, uh, even though you have not been charged, and the police could release the names through the ways that they do. Yeah. And so, uh, I was never charged with anything because they couldn't come up with anything that I'd done. Indeed, when they raided our home, I was taken away, Chris was left to deal with them, and the search warrant was legal, but curious. And the reason it was curious is because they weren't looking for anything. anything. Okay. Yeah. So what did they take, Chris? They took all sorts of things. My computers, pulled computers, phones, laptops. I mean, what's, um, going, what's going through yeah. your mind, Chris? You're sitting there, your husband's just been dragged out of bed and yeah. taken out of the house. People are taking this stuff. What, what's going through your mind? I mean, because you, you've said since the second that this happened, you never once doubted that this was true. Um, yeah. Although that... For, for a moment, you, you have to doubt mm. it. You can't help but doubt it and it's wonder, because I don't know what the details of the allegations are. Mm. And they were dating back to a time before I knew Paul. And so you think, well, maybe, maybe something happened. Maybe, um, you know, you just don't know. No. And it wasn't until the police, that, until Paul came home with the allegation sheet that I read it and I was like, I laughed. Mm. Because I said, well, you've never done that to me. Mm. Um, and... Um, there was a, they were describing a man I did not know or recognise, and that, it was at that point I knew that this was false. And how much... Let's talk about... Yeah, because we know that you were never charged, OK? But let's talk about the impact this had on you, the great Gambo, who we all adored by the British well, public. You're on the radio. And how did it affect Bless your you. relationship? Did you lose friends? I've said before, at times like this, people say you realise who your true friends are, but you always know who your true friends are. Yeah. It's just that they show it. Mm. 
Yeah. And when they show it, you feel your love for them. And it's greater than the disappointment you feel in the institutions that have let you down. Cliff said, it's horrible to discover that the people you should be able to trust the most are actually the people you can trust the least. Yeah. In my case, the Metropolitan Police and the BBC. So you were removed from your radio show for mm -hmm. that entire year. That's right. So also that has an impact on your livelihood, your income. Mm. How, <laughs> yeah. how did you cope? Thank God I had a year's worth of earnings in the bank. That was a financial tip I'd once read in the New York Times. Uh, and I thought if I ever needed it, it would be because of health reasons. No, it was because of this. Uh, what really disappointed me was that uh, the BBC dropped me. Indeed, uh, their uh, head of strategy was quoted as saying, what I want to know is why we haven't sacked this guy yet. Well, probably because he never met me and he didn't know anything about the case. Wow. And the BBC didn't know investigative journalism to find out what it was about. Uh, and uh, so I, I was just left there, uh, hanging out there like a, a fish at the end of a hook that nobody wanted to bite. And so you felt abandoned at this point? Well, of course I was abandoned. There had been, on both of the radio stations that I worked for, and still do, two and four, radios two and four, celebration of my 40 years with the BBC. That was at the beginning of the month. At the end of the month, I'd gone from being Mr. 40 Years to Mr. Who? Yeah. Because I was Drop. not allowed on Just the air. Drop how, like how that. How did you support Paul Christopher during this time? Because you said, you know, once you'd seen what the accusations were or the charges, you, you believed that this was absolutely not possible that your husband did any of this. How did you deal with... You know, it's a very, very difficult time for Paul, but you're living this life with him. Yeah. Um... In one sense, you feel completely helpless to, to do anything about it because it's all out of our hands. I, I can't stop the proceedings. Um, so I had to find ways to feel useful and to provide um, support for Paul, who, of course, reacted very emotionally to everything that was going on. And I sort of took a diff slightly different role, which was to sort of take things slightly more objectively and point out the reasons why things were happening. But I just became... I went into battle mode and started researching other cases, talking to other people who'd been through it, um, people who were not in the public domain, who'd been had their lives turned upside down yeah. by false allegations. Um, I was following all the other cases. I went to the Max Clifford trial to see what was going on, yeah. um, learning as much as I can so that, you know, knowledge is power which, in some sense. Which, for you, Paul, must have just been your, your biggest crutch to, to, to exactly. you know, lean on exactly. the entire time. Of all the uh, spouses and partners of the wrongly accused, well, of the accused, there's only one that left, and that was Max Clifford's wife. Mm. The rest, and for those who were falsely accused, they were uh, resolute. I mean, Jimmy Tarbuck said that his wife Pauline was his rock. Yeah. And Chris was mine. He did something absolutely brilliant on those uh, 12 hours I was with the police. He called every one of our relatives in the world and said, don't talk to the press, yeah. which was so clever because every one of our, our relatives in the world was contacted, yeah. including my two female cousins who have different surnames and live in different... Oh, when they want to find something, that. they'll dig it. Yep, yeah. <laughs> they'll dig it up. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. which lets you know that, of course, the names got out. Immediately. Of course they do. Of course they do. Well, look, we do need to say this. Um, uh, we've got a right of reply from the BBC. We approached them. They declined to comment, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, with the right of reply from the Crown Prosecution Service says uh, we reached an agreement with Mr Gambaccini without admission of liability. And from the Met Police, they said we've previously put on the record our comments about Operation Nutri and the claim brought by Mr Gambaccini. We have nothing to add. And you did mention Sir Keir Starmer earlier. We approached his office this morning. They've declined to comment. On that um, the, we could talk for so long, so long. Um, but you can see the full uh, story, the full documentary. It's called The Accused, National Treasures on Trial. That's tonight at nine o'clock on Channel 4 and All 4. Um, the Great Gambo, it is a delight to have you here today. Thank you so much. And, and you it's lovely to meet you, Chris. Well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. You're a beautiful couple. His new really movie are. opens next month. It does. Oh, I'm coming. <laughs> it's, yes. I'm coming to see you it. You are coming. I'm coming to see it. In, in, in from, from the, the side. side. In, in from, from, from the side. side. It's the rugby one, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Can't wait to watch it, because obviously yes. I'm such a rugby player. Yeah. Sub-BC, I'll see you on Saturday. Thanks.